Hello and welcome everyone to uh, Deaf Nation 2023. Um, and in particular, uh, welcome everyone to this first track or the first session, which is about intelligent apps. My name is Manfred. I am a sales specialist for application services and middleware for Red Hat. And my responsibility is uh, the EMEA market. Um, and I will be your host and your moderator today for the first session. Uh, we will have three presentations in that session and you will receive an email after the event with the details where you can find the, the slides, um, the recordings and all sorts of other materials for those three presentations. And in fact, for, for all presentations and labs that were given during uh, definition. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comment section uh, on, on the platform. And then either I will address them directly or I will hand them over at the end of the presentation to our speaker um, to address those, those questions. And with that, I would say let's start with the first presentation. Um, our first speaker is Noe. Uh, Noe is a backend engineer at Red Hat, and she currently works in the SCAPA team. And with that, I'm handing over to you, Noe, and um, kick it away. Thank you, Manfred. So this presentation is, is going to be like an explanation on how to uh, uh, install a scalper step by step and create a topology of uh, a virtual application uh, network. So, just to give a little bit of context, um, scalper is a service interconnect that operates in the layer seven and allowed hybrid cloud communications uh, across different providers uh, OpenShift, AWS, or, or um, uh, um, uh, AWS, etc. There is no need for VPNs. Um, that, like I mentioned before, uh, creates a virtual application network. I'm going to call them VAN from now on, and that are managed by the routers that operate inside the uh, the scupper. So. Uh, Scupper has inside a router that is the, the, the principal component that uh, sends messages between sites. And that's the way that the Scupper can communicate different services in different, uh, in different uh, clusters. So this is the, the basic use, it, use case. So uh, typically in a microservice architecture, uh, we have uh, several microservices and several databases that uh, communicates one with each other. But the challenge comes when uh, part of those microservices are uh, located in different clusters uh, because for legal reasons, they have to be in private data centers or pricing on, or you name it. So um, we can make uh, the communication easier with a scalper instead of having to uh, configure a VPN or, or any firewall rules. So this is the agenda for today. So we are going to install a scalper in different clusters. Uh, we are going to show the cluster console as well. We are going to see how to create the tokens and how to connect those sites. Uh, we're going to see uh, uh, how to expose the services through Scapper, look the status, and, and also how to see the events or all that sort of information that is useful to see what's going on in the van. So this is our starting point. We have three, we want to connect three sites. One of them is public and has three microservices. And the other, the other, uh, the other ones. Sorry, one. Uh, the other one is also public and has uh, 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 diverse microservices, and one of them is private. So let's let's install that. So in this case, for the public, we are using a IBM Cloud that is located in Frankfurt. We have already uh, three deployments. Uh, and for the, the public and the private, we are going to use two sessions of Minikube.
Okay, now we have all the deployments there. Up and running, okay. And now we are going to install in Scupper. So a Scupper uh, deploys a router and a service controller in a particular namespace. Uh, some feature of this post can be customized, like CPU, memory usage, or, and so on. Uh, we can also habilitate the console that is going to help to visualize this topology uh, better. So we go again to the terminal. Uh, we hit scatter uh, init minus minus help. We could see here uh, all the customization options that we have. But for this case, we are going to just hit scuppering it. And the private, we are going to also install scuppering it without um, customizing any further. And in the, in the public uh, cluster, we are going to enable the, the console. Uh, we are saying that the authentication is going to be internal and we are going to pass a user and a password. Okay. We can see here that we have our previous deployments. Uh, we have a scupper router and the and this the scupper service controller that is going to uh, mm, synchronize all the services in in all this in, in all the sites so at this point we have a scupper but it is not uh, connected with anything so for that we are going to create the tokens uh, that implies generating yaml files with the target site uh, certificates uh, these tokens expire after a short period of time and can, by, can, can be revoked, and by default, they are single use. After that, we can establish a, a link uh, between two sites using that token uh, between the, the sites that we want to connect. And after that, we can see uh, the link status to see if we if we are already connected or not. So going back to the terminal, uh, we are going to create the token. I'm going to specify that two sites are going to use this token uh, because if not this uh, uh, this token cannot be used, so I'm going to specify that. Uh, it, it cannot be used twice, that, that's what I wanted to say. So here we want to create another token. And now we are going to create a link. It's copper, create, and we use the token that we have created to the to the public site. Okay. And last, we are going to create two links here. One to the uh, to the public one that it is in in, in IBM Cloud and the other Minikube session. Okay. 
So now we hit a uh, scupper link status. We can see that the this site, the private is connected, has two links that are connected. What happens if we uh, hit here the scupper link link status? So there is not links configured here because here only created we only we have created the the token, but we can see the incoming links with an option status and show incoming links. So we see that we are receiving two links: one from the private one side, that is this one and another one from the public to site here. Okay, let's continue. This one. Now we have the, the three sites connected uh, and we have uh, our uh, deployments in, in Kubernetes or in OpenShift, but uh, they're not exposed by a scabber. So uh, when we expose a service in a scupper, uh, this is going to be synchronized in all the other sites. So from the point of view of, uh, of any service, any other service connected to the van is, is local to them. So it's, it's like they are in the, in the, same, in the same site. So let's, let's do that. In this case, I have um, a, um, a script for this, but I'm going to show you what it has inside. So the, the command for exposed deployments in a scupper is like this. Uh, we select the deployment that we want to expose for a scupper, the others that we want to use, the port, the protocol, HTTP2 or TCP, and the target port. So let's execute this. And we are going to expose as well. In the public to cluster. All the deployments that we have in this Kubernetes. Okay, we can see meanwhile the service that we have here. Scupper uh, service status. Okay, so we can see that in this site we have all of these services, but uh, the targets uh, only. They, they are only the, the ones that we deploy actually in, in, this, um, in this site, in this Kubernetes. But we, for, for the, the rest of the, the services that were exposed through other scupper sites are locally uh, accessible. So it's like they are in the same, in, in the same site, uh, 
but they they are in uh, the target is in in any other sites. Okay, so let's go back to the presentation. So uh, the scapper status. Sorry for this. Uh, Uh, the scapper status uh, shows as well uh, the sites connected directly or indirectly, the number of servers exposed in general in all the van, and the console URL if if we configured that. If you remember, we configured it in one of the in one of the sites. So we have seen the scapper service status command, but the scapper uh, status command. is the one that uh, says that the scapper is enabled for this space that is connected to and uh, to other sites, uh, the private and the public too. And in total, we have exposed 10 services. <clears throat> so if we, have, if we go to the um, public to uh, site, Uh, we can see that the namespace is public too, that it is connected as well to uh, other sites, and it has 10 exposed uh, services. And we have here the console to the, uh, the, sorry, the URL to the console. So if we copy the link, So uh, the console, as I said before, is showing a uh, visual information about the topology of the fund and provides also uh, observability of the data flow within the process. So let's go to see this, uh, this console. So I pasted before the URL. Uh, we set um, a user and password before. Okay. So we see that we have all the components here. And all the processes here. So we can see uh, the topology, the all the addresses that we have uh, that we have available, uh, the sites, uh, the components that is all the the images then uh, that are running and the processes that is one uh, per replica. So uh, let me check something first. Okay. So I don't know what is not refreshing correctly uh, all the all the topology, but just to give you an idea. Uh, uh, you can see how the let's let's use um, let's see if the if the application is working properly. So we are going here to the uh, we have the front end of the application uh, exposed in a in a load balancer an external load balancer. So let's let's try if the application was if it is working correctly. 
Okay, seems like it is working correctly. Okay. Oh. It's hmm, so strange. Let me refresh the the services. Um. Okay, let's see if it's working again. Okay, meanwhile, uh, yeah, we have, this is the result of the demo that we have uh, three sites connected through a scupper. We have two links from the private to the public one to the public two, and one from the public two to the public one. Let me see. Okay. So let's see if Okay, now we have all the all the sites here. We can see all the components here. We can see the interactions between the components. Um, let me see. Okay. So let's see if the scrapper is, is okay. So the last thing that I want to show you. It's that we can revoke access to the to the links. We can destroy all the links that we have, and we can debug events also in in the scupper or or all the things that we have created in scupper. So, uh, real quick, let's go here. Um, We can hit a scupper revoke uh, access. And if we hit here a scupper uh, status, Uh, we can see that the link to the um, public one is not connected. So uh, 
he the on the links were uh, disabled from the public one. And if we hit a scrapper debug events, uh, we can see all the events that are happening inside the scrapper and to see all the objects that are created in uh, Kubernetes. Uh, if we search for uh, scrapper service, uh, we can see here all, all the all the resources that were created in in Kubernetes, uh, in Kubernetes by Scupper. So, um, just to finish, the takeaways are that with Scupper, your application can spam multiple cloud providers, uh, data centers, and regions. There is no VPNs required, and uh, there are several ways to check the status and topology of the ban. So in this uh, in this last uh, URL, you have all in the steps to do this demo, and hopefully you don't have problems like me with uh, with the deployments. And uh, this is the 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 data of, of the project, the the web page, the Google Groups to ask any questions. And um, that's it. I hope you have enjoyed this presentation. All right. No, I thank you so much for this for this presentation. Um, we're a little bit short on time, but there is one question in the chat, and I'll just read it out to you. A uh, question by Andy. Does Kappa update the Kubernetes DNS entries in the connected namespaces across the clusters? The services uh, that are uh, that the Scapa creates to connect all the different uh, all the different deployments are created by Scapa and synchronized, yes, in all the Kubernetes sites. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much. Okay, with that, uh, we would like to wrap up this first presentation. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Noe. Like I said at the beginning, uh, you will receive an email later on uh, in a couple of days with all the information about where to get the slides, recordings and all sorts of other links and resources that have been used. Okay, thanks, Noe. Um, Thank you.